Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today's video we're going to discuss how we can achieve a quick and simple turn in place function. So as my character's direction or control rotation reaches a certain direction they're going to start playing their turn in place animation. We're going to read from a curve value that we set on that animation and use that value to drive our character's actual rotation. So yeah let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and go into our character's animation blueprint. And in the animation graph at the very beginning, wherever your character is standing still and idle, and that's where you want them to turn in place, we're going to go ahead and add a new state machine. So I cut that. I'm going to go state machine. And we're going to create a state machine called turn in place. Okay, plug that in here. In turn in place, we're going to have three states. One's called idle. I'll go ahead and put the idle animation there that we just had. Uh-oh, did I not? Okay, I did. Idle goes there. We'll go ahead and hook the entry into idle. And then we have a state for turn in place right and a place for turn in place left. Oops, that's a state. <laughs> Turn in place left. Okay, so we've got these three states. Idle, turn place right, and turn in place left. So the rules for going between these are going to be as follows. From idle to turning, we're going to use... Now, actually, I should say, from idle to turning right, we're going to get our character's yaw and make sure it's greater than a certain amount that is a positive number somewhere between 45 and 90. You can use 90 just to be, that means as, as soon as your character reaches its actual 90 degree angle or your control rotation does, that's when you're gonna turn. So we can do that for turning right and for turning left, we're gonna do is less than negative 90. Less than negative 90. And you can do between 45 and 90 for either on either of these. Okay, so. Now we have rules for transitioning to, we need rules for transitioning back. We'll go ahead and set this rule up. It's just gonna be, if you right click and type time remaining and look for time remaining ratio. Uh, why is this not context sensitive? Time remaining ratio. Oh, that's fraction. Time remaining. Oh, whoops, that's right. I actually have to plug the animations in first. So go into your turn in place right, and we can go ahead and hook turn right into there. And for turn in place left, we'll take turn left 90 and hook that into that. Okay, and now we'll have access to the time remaining nodes here. So we can type time remaining, and it's going to be for the animation that we just plugged in. So time remaining ratio is less than... And I'm going to say 0.2. So this just means that uh, there's 20% or less of the animation to play. And we'll go ahead and transition back to the idle state. So I'll go ahead and do that for the same here. Go ahead and say time remaining ratio is less than 0.2. Okay, so from here, what we need to do, now we've got our state machine set up in the rules. We're going to go into the actual animations and here we're going to add some curves. So under the drop down for curve, you can see I'm on the turn right animation, turn right 90. Under the drop down for curve, I'm going to go ahead and add curve. And the first time that you create a curve, uh, you'll start to have access to it in this list here. And uh, so I already created the curves that I need, but you'll go ahead and hit create curve and create one and call it is turning and then create a second curve and call it turn in place or you can call it turn in place amount i suppose is a better name for it turn in place amount so the first curve we're going to go ahead and click the drop down and convert to metadata so that way we can know if we're turning or not every time this is playing it'll be a one if it's not playing it'll be a zero and for the actual amount, we're going to 
uh, open this up and we're going to add two keys and we are going to adjust these keys values. So the first one is going to be uh, at the time of zero and at the value of for the right turn, it's going to be 90. And the second key is going to be at a value of about a, a second in and it's going to be at a value of zero. OK, so you can right click, select all keys. You can go zoom to fit that way you can see everything and you can right click and say auto and it'll give them a curve and now your curve value is going from 90 to zero over the course of a second while you're turning right okay looks good let's do the same thing for the other uh turn left let's go into turn left we're going to add two curves i've already got them here uh, i'm going to replace those just for the sake of the tutorial we got one called is turning and one called turning in place amount and now again once you create these curves you'll have access to them uh and you don't need to create another curve with the same name in fact you can't create another curve with the same name you'll just have to select it from the drop down but you will have to reset these curves values so for is turning, we'll convert that to metadata. And for the turn and place amount, now we'll set two keys, but for the turn left animation, the first key is going to go at negative 90. So 0 and negative 90. And the second key will go at 1 and 0. And then we'll just go ahead and select all keys, zoom to fit, give them a curve. Okay, so for the turn left animation, now we're officially going from negative 90 to 0 over the course of a second. And that's just the curve amount. We're going to actually add a scalar to this and apply it to our rotation. So let's go into our animation blueprint here. And we're going to go into the event graph. And uh, wherever you want to add this, I'm just going to add it to the very end of the event graph here. And we are going to get our character. If you don't have a reference to your character, you can get one at the beginning of the game like this. Pretty easy, pretty simple. And uh, we're going to go ahead and drag off and say set actor. What is it? Local rotation. Add actor. Uh, ch -ch -ch wait, hold on a second actor rotation add actor local rotation add actor local rotation okay so that's going to be the node that is we're going to use to actually rotate our character because as you can see as of right now the way the setup is you should be able to reach a certain uh angle and your character will start playing that animation but they're not actually rotating in place right so that's why we're going to add a rotation amount here in the animation blueprint. But the first thing we want to do is check to see if we actually should be adding any rotation amount at all. And the way that we're going to do that is get the curve dat value, get curve value from the curve called is turning. Remember that's our metadata curve. So if the curve value is greater than zero, it means it's one. And that means that our turning animation is playing. So in that case, we are going to go ahead and add actor local rotation. And how much are we going to add? We're going to add a delta rotation. We can go ahead and right click on this and say split struct pin. So we're only going to be rotating our yaw here. And from here, how much do we want to rotate? Well, let's get our other curve value, get curve value. And this one we called turn in place amount, I believe. And what we're going to do is multiply this multiply by delta time okay uh where's my delta time so multiply that by delta time and then we're going to multiply this by a scalar so we can go ahead and right click promote to variable we can call this uh rotation scalar okay because we're going to need that in order to determine how we're going to uh, edit how much we turn with that so we can go ahead and plug this in here hit compile and we're going to give this a default amount 
rotation scaler. I found that numbers between 4 and 8 are the best. 4 might be a magic number. I like 5, so we're going to use 5. And now, what this is saying is, if we should turn, then we're going to add this much uh, rotation amount to our actor's rotation. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it out. And <clears throat> it didn't work. So, what did we do wrong? Let's go ahead and check. Do, 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 do. Did we spell everything correctly? Turn in place amount. Yep, we, turn, we spelled that correctly. Did we... Is turning is greater than zero? So... While we're doing this, let's take a quick lesson in debugging, okay? So from any time, we can go ahead and make sure that we click the play button here. And then we can click the drop down to make sure that we're actually selected for our spawned character. And we can start debugging, okay? So here, you can see, uh, oh, <laughs> none of this is actually reaching a point because I actually need to plug this in. Sorry, folks. I do apologize. Now, you can see, uh, I actually was on my other screen here while I was turning my character, but now we've actually got energy flowing to these nodes because uh, I have it hooked up the correct way that I need it. All right, so, and what is the result? Let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, so our character is rotating, and they're rotating like a little bit too much. I'd say that that's like a really big step, right? So that's where we can uh, tune the rotational scaler, okay? And the reason that we need to do that is because it's going to take a, a different amount of time, uh-oh, uh, for each character to, for each character's rotation animation to play. So in this place, we're going from that 90 to 0 in one second. Sometimes it'll be 0.75, sometimes it'll be 0.35. Anyways, that's the reason that we have given ourselves this scaler. So I'm going to turn it down. Instead of 5, I'm going to go down to 4. And let's see how this looks. Uh, it looks a little bit better. Let's go down another notch here. Uh, where was it? I apologize. Uh, rotational scaler. Let's go down to 3. Okay, that's looking a little better. It looks like a more believable step. I think that's pretty good, actually. I'm happy with that. Okay. That's looking pretty great. Okay. So, the other thing I want to point out is that what if I uh, get to this area here? Okay, this area here is actually, and I'll show you uh, by going to the debugger here. And under our animation graph... We'll go into our idle state and see we're stuck in between the idle and turn in place. It's and it's because we already played our animation, but we're also uh, in between our you know negative ninety yaw and positive ninety yaw essentially. So what it results in is our character not actually continuing to turn. We want our character to continue to turn here. So uh, the only thing we need to do is go into our animation blueprint and inside of our uh, turn in place nodes, we're going to go ahead and scroll down and set these to looping so that our turn in place animations are looping here. And that means that for as long as we are in that uh, zone of negative 90 degrees our character will continue to play the animation so that means that any crazy values like this is going to cause our character to just self-correct so right now you can see my character is not actually at 90 degrees you can tell by the circle okay well actually the circle is not quite exact uh actually it is exact that is technically my character's forward this is going to be my character's right, okay? Uh, no, not not quite exact. I apologize, folks. <laughs> the circle's for something else. Forget all that I just said. The point is, now your character is not going to get stuck in that stupid zone. 
and is going to be able to rotate freely and be uh, able to turn in place. So there is my simple solution. Uh, I know that it might be a little bit hacky, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Let me know your solutions. And I also am going to share a more uh, elegant solution in the comments below. This one's from Druid Mechanics. And again, I highly support his channel. Go give it a subscription as well. And uh, please, if you've got a moment, if you liked what you saw here, if you want more of it, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. I really appreciate everybody, every one of my subscribers. And uh, yeah, take care, everyone. For more videos like this, stay tuned, and we'll see you soon.